Regal Draft League rolls on into week seven. Three weeks left, only two teams have secured their playoff spots. EGN, the Grumpy Pigs. And only the Septiles cannot make the postseason. So, nine teams are currently battling it out for six playoff spots. Before we get into the fixtures and their implications, we do have some unfortunate news. Chairman Otter has had to step aside as coach of the Orlando Washawats. Ding dong, the witch is dead. This season, we are guaranteed of a new champion. In all seriousness though, as much as I give the guy a lot of shit on the channel, Otter has always had a great sense of humor about it and has taught me an incredible amount, not only about draft, but about Pokemon in general, and has run this league with class and honor. I cannot imagine how tough it has been over the last few months trying to run this league with finals and everything else going on outside of Pokemon. So, I wish the guy nothing but the best and hope to see him back for season four. That being said though, we do have a new coach and a new team finishing out the season in his stead. So, everyone, please welcome Alex the Ferrothorn and the Cornish Corfish. Alex brings a ton of draft experience to the league and immediately takes control of one of the strongest teams we have ever seen. So, we wish them luck with the remaining matches. With such a strong roster, there weren't many changes needed. But Alice did drop Samurott, Probopass, and Chestnut to bring in Morgrim and Seb Striker. That brings us to this week's matches. Only one match this week had no playoff implications, as the Grumpy Pigs. Well, Iron Crown decimated the East Austin Sceptiles with two 4 1 games and the expanding horse getting six of the eight KOs. In the other non replay match, the two bulkiest trick room teams in history faced off as the EGN took the bear to Virginia to face the Buizels. In game one, Barcelona found a new tag team partner as the Magic Cat. Neoscarada got a debut hat trick in a 4 1 victory. Followed that up with the game ceiling KO in another 4 1 game 2. We start this week's replays with a battle of two of the four 3 and 3 teams as the San Diego Dondozo take on the Denali Delmise. Mid season controversy aside, Star Streak has really kicked on in season 3 with the Dalmice sitting in the final playoff spot and looking to seal another massive win to secure a postseason berth. Don Dozo right now are statistically the best 3-3 three three team thanks to that plus 5 differential. So, with other results going their way, could sneak into that top 4 and avoid a battle with the leaders in round 1 of the playoffs. We have essentially the same 6 has brought the last few weeks. That Excadrill has been so good the last few weeks. It's caused people so many problems. I did not expect it to be as good as it is without the sand. On Star Streak side, you kind of have what you'd expect. Torn, Ursh, Raichu, a demonic trio with the rain up. Throw in redirection from Magmar. Some super speedy EV action from Sylveon. And Shell Smash potential for Torterra. Star Trek built a tough squad to prep for. And he's shown he can pilot it too. Game one of probably the most important match of the week. What are the leads? Greentail Iron Hands. Midas Raichu. We're not going to get Nasty Plot Torn again, right? 
no chance. Booster screen tail this week. Be boosting, okay. Terra coming out from the Delmites. Into Torn. Terra Grass. Resisting the Iron Hands electric moves now. And it is Nasty Plot Torn once again. Excellent Gleam. Electro Webs from Raichu. Rain Punch. Ooh, just misses out on the KO. Surprised to see no fake out. Rain Dance on Raichu again. Gonna see a Bleak Wind Storm, but there's a Dazzling Gleam first from the screen tail. Raichu goes down. Surprised to see no Encore there. There's the Bleak Wind Storm. Not enough even at plus two. Close combat from the Iron Hands. Finishes off Tornadus. Erifu. Torterra to finish up. Sunny day, Scream Tail. Virgin Strikes. I'm gonna finish off the Scream Tail. But it's done its job. Woodhammer. Finishes up the Iron Hand, but why not go for high horsepower there? Maybe dicked in a terror? Here comes a Moongus. Ooh, Banded Ursh. With that frisk, they know it's White Herb Torterra and will have Shell Smash. Virgin Strikes comes in. Of course, does nothing in the sun and nothing to Among Us. There's the eruption by Torterra. So that sun does a ton of damage to Urshifu. Great prep from Evany. Game one goes to San Diego Dondozo. Game two, can Star Street pull this one back? Moongus Iron Hands versus Urshifu Magma. Urshifu switches out. In comes Raichu. Fake out into the Magma. Gets a flame body burn. Spore on Amoongus into the Raichu slot. Amoongus switches out. In comes Typhlosion. 
Covert Cloak Raichu Safety Goggles Magma. The taunt is revealed. Close combat. Oh, not quite enough to pick up the Magma KO. That burn saved it. Raichu stays asleep. Heat wave. Ooh, magma faster than Typhlosion. Interesting. Eruption comes out, finishes off the magma. Almost picks up the KO on that Raichu. Now, close combat from Iron Hands will finish the job. comes to Urshifu and Tornadus. We know it's a nasty plot torn and it doesn't need to be set in Tailwind here. There's a nasty plot. Virgin Strikes will pick up the Typhlosion. But with no damage on the Iron Hands it's probably going to delete the tornadoes. Wild charge, oh, into the Urshifu slot. That's the burn, not doing much over half. Up comes Screamtail. Is it an encore screen tail? Is the question. Won't be able to lock it into Nasty Plot, but it will be able to prevent it going for an attacking move. There a dragon on the screen tail. Great shout into this team. There's a tailwind. Surging Strikes, not going to do anything to that bulky little demon. It is an Encore Scream Tail. Welcome to clicking Tailwind for the rest of the game. Wild Charge finishes off the Urshifu. Terra Grass going into the Tornadus. Not sure why the Terra didn't go into Urshifu. <clears throat> Thunder Wave. Oh no. This Scream Tail's an absolute menace. Wild Charge is not doing a great deal, so if it can get a move off, which there's no chance it will. Two turns of Tailwind, two turns of Encore, but with that Thunder Wave, it's pretty certain. Close Combat does pick up the KO, though. Really, really well prepped and well played by Ebony there. Terra Dark Tyrants versus Alaskan Articunos. Four and two, currently fourth placed Tyrants versus the two and four pushing for playoffs Articunos. Bulky offense versus incredibly creative team building.
This could be an absolute stormer of a match. What will Tommy bring to counter that halfway? <clears throat> what will Tommy bring to counter that ridiculous duo of halfway Olgapon and Iron Boulder? Landris could be pretty good here if the speed tiers go in its favour and that boulder isn't EV'd to live on Earth power. Because I'm pretty sure Mighty Cleave will do some significant damage. To the ground genie. The Suian Gudra with Sap Sipper and Terra Water kind of walls the Ogre Pond. But what does it really do in return? So this, this is a very, very intriguing battle. What are the leads? How'd you fire Gudra for the Articunos? Noivern Gothitel. There's that frisk. Razor Claw Gudra. Okay. Speed boost. Take out into the gouging fire. Witcheroo. Now a choice, Scarf Gudra. <laughs> Draco Meteor. That leads the Neuburn. Comes a Iron Boulder. Terra coming out into Gouging Fire. The grass. Now resisting that rock damage from Iron Boulder. Dragon Cheer. Oh no. <laughs> now got a choice scarf. Draco Meteor. Gudra. With a crit boost. Breaks the sub. Doesn't get the crit. But those sat drops aren't going to matter if it gets a crit. This strat is evil. Breaking swipes. Reducing the attack on that iron bowler. Another substitute. Another Draco Meteor. This time gets the crit. Blocked by the sub. Psychic from the Gothitelle into the Gouging Fire. Doesn't really do a great deal of damage. Helping hand from the Gothitelle this time. Another breaking swipe. Minus two on the Iron Boulder now. Sacred Sword comes out, does a ridiculous amount of damage. There's that crit, Draco Meteor. Here comes Numbi. Another breaking swipe. Finishes off the Iron Boulder. Fortunately, Numbi's attack gets lowered. Draco Meteor misses. Ice Spinner. Oh, not quite there. Thanks to that attack drop. Another breaking swipe. Another lowering of the attack. 
Dragon Meteor connects this time, but without the crit, does nothing. Ice Spinner, still not enough to finish off the Gouging Fire. This lead from Tommy is absurd. Another Breaking Swipe, minus three now. Minus six Draco Meteor, no crit, no finish. Finally the Gudra goes down. Out comes Toxicroak. Breaking Swipe, though enough to take game one for the Articunos. That lead was just... Oh my god. Wow. Madness. Now if you're Draco here, you kind of have to go with the same lead again. Because you can't let the Gudra have Razor Claw. Because that essentially guarantees crit. The trouble is, the... Gouging fire being so fast, it's just going to keep reducing the attack on all your mons. You need to get rid of that gouging fire pretty damn quickly. Game two. Gouging fire Gudra again. And once again, we see Neuvern and Gothitelle. Fake out into Gudra this time. There's the switcheroo. There's the Dragon Cheer coming out. Helping Hand. Breaking Swipe though. Takes the Noivern down just below half. Oh no, it is half. Draco Meteor connects. Oh, that's so bulky. Draco Meteor into the Gothitelle. Gets the crit, but not enough. Outing fire with another breaking swipe. Gets the roll he needs. Noivern is gone. Gudra, oh, does connect. Finishes off the Gothitel. Here comes the Iron Boulder. And Numbi makes his return. Terror from the Articunos. Into the gouging fire. A shard from the Numbi this time. Get some damage off before that breaking swipe comes in. Sacred Sword finishes off the Gudra. Menace number one is gone. There's that Toxicroak. Has Tommy brought the same four for game two? Terra now from the Tyrants. Into Boulder. Terra flying. Now resisting those fighting moves from the Toxicroak. Fake out though goes into the Boulder. Breaking Swipe comes out. Swipe again, so we now have a minus three Numbi. 
really chipping away at this. I am Boulder. Ice Punch. Oh, great tag. Finishes off. High horsepower. Picks up the KO on the Toxicroak. Here comes Landorus. A shard at minus three still does almost half. Breaking Spike continuing with the chip. Now minus four. And an Earth Power finishes the job. GG's. Oh god. That gouging fire is a nightmare to deal with. Absolute nightmare. Finally, we have the debuting Ornish Corfish, coached by Alice the Ferrothorn, taking on Ted and the Santa Luna Storms. Alice takes over from the Orlando Oshawa who were sitting quite prettily in third place with a 4-2 record and a pretty good differential. The Storms are one of three teams sitting at 2-4 and four and pushing for that final playoff spot. With a win here following that Delmai loss, the Storms could sneak into that 8th spot. Though, after the Art of Kuno's convincing victory over the Tyrants, it's going to be close. Here we go. Game one. Alice's debut. We have Comfy Superior, Rillaboom for Rigorat. Surge of Grass. Of course, that Grassy Surge also going to be boosting that super Superior's damage. Takeout goes into the Comfy. Is that Leaf Storm? Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Contrary. Boosting up. The superior's special attack as the Ferrigraph twists the dimensions. Superior protects. Hype voice from the Ferrigraph. Not doing a great deal of damage to that Comfy. Knockoff from Rillaboom goes into the Protect. Comfy reverses the Trick Room. Rigorath Protects. Giga Drain. Energy Ball from the Flower Crown. Into the Rillaboom. I guess expecting a switch. Miracle Seed. Oh. No wonder that Leaf Storm did so much damage. Floral healing. It's all that health from the knockoff right back. Grassy glide. Decent chip damage and another leaf storm comes out. Finishes off the Ferrigarath. Plus four superior.
becomes a left road. Terror from the storms. Into the superior. Terror stellar superior. Another floral healing. Ooh, Thunder Wave, that could put some, could put a spanner in Ted's works here. Knockoff comes out, resisted, but still does a fair bit of damage to that Comfy. Thanks to the crit. Terra Stella, Terra Blast. Oof, that's a lot of damage. And now we get a plus four superior. A plus five superior. That disappears. Out comes Primarina. Draining kiss into the Rillaboom. Gets a little bit of health back. Drum beating. Gives a nice speed boost, but Superior is paralyzed. Ooh, the Ice Beam from Primarina, not quite enough to pick up the KO. And Floral Healing brings it right back up. This thing is ridiculous. Giga Drain, one hit KO on the Primarina. It did not matter whatsoever. How the hell do you stop this if you're Alice? Let's lead from Ted has just sat there the entire game. Era Blast. Plus five. Doesn't quite get the KO on Rillaboom. Rillaboom is not long for this world, though, now that it is a plus six snack. Drum beating doesn't take Comfy below half. Draining Kiss. Doesn't do a lot, but it's chip. It's going to stop it getting KO'd. This plus six Terra Stella Terra Blast, though, puts the Rillaboom out of its misery. And we go straight into game two. What can Alice do? No, different lead. We see the Incineroar Comfy and Magmortar plus Bear. Follow me from the Magmortar. Energy Ball, not doing a great deal, even with the crit. Magmortar with a clear amulet. Oh, I love that tech. No parting shot for you. A voice into the two stupidly bulky mons. Floral healing though. Takes the incident back to full. Another follow me from the Magmortar. Vacuum wave from the Ursa Luna. Almost brings in Sin back to Ha. Knock off. Takes away the clear amulet. Ball healing. Oh my god. Oh. 
oh, this is insane. Heat wave, nothing. Gets a burn though on the comfy. Not finding those leftovers. Knock off into the bear with no item. The hyper voice though takes out the comfy. Here comes Articuno. Another follow me from Magmorda. Our mind Articuno. We've seen in the past how much of a nightmare that thing is to deal with. Finally, Insign gets off his parting shot. Out comes the snack. Ooh, that hyper voice did so much damage. Did that superior? Snack protects. There's a Luna protects. Clear smog. Getting rid of those calm mind boosts. Freezing Glare should finish off the Magmortar though. Yep. Here comes Electrode. From Ted. I have to imagine this is going to be the superior again. No, it's into the Articuno. Terra Fairy. Terra from Alice into Ursaluna. Terra normal. Removing that grass weakness. Fucking wave. Not enough. Electro taunts the bird. Giga Drain now not doing a great amount to that Ursaluna and Articuno can no longer calm mind protect on the superior you wave into the protect oh that's a risky electro webs missed on the Articuno Freezing Glare finishes off Ursa Luna. Oh, that miss. So unlucky. In comes Primarina. This beam should be enough to finish off the period. This is Thunder Wave. Now it is Primarina going to outspeed Snack. Freezing Glare into the Electrode. That's just over half. Oh, it doesn't outspeed, but full para. Ice Beam picks up the KO. Kuno taunt has now ended up comes the incineroar Trump webs reducing the speed on that Articuno but boosting its special attack salt fest now gone from Primarina Oh, crit, fleas, crit freezing glare. Finishes off the electrode. 
Psychic Noise. Not enough to pick up the Articuno KO. Flare Blitz. Oh, that's a lot of damage for a resisted hit. Freezing Glare should finish it off. Yep. Oh, that's a tough debut for Alice. But that game two was amazing. Absolutely amazing.